Greetings, Stamp Sleuths. Today we're going to investigate Commonwealth Islands Part 3. Um, this is going to be a few more parts to finish this off. However, I think it's interesting and it more or less deserves being looked into. Um, the first country I'm starting with is Mauritius. Uh, uh, it's an island in the Indian Ocean and it was a British crown colony until it was uh, granted self-government in 1967 and it became independent in 1968. It uh, is still, as far as I understand, a part of the Commonwealth. Its first stamp was issued in 1847. It was an orange and preferent Victoria left facing. I do not have one of those. Uh, it's an older stamp. My earliest stamp likely is going to be this issue here from 1937, and it belongs to a set in, in the omnibus. Um, that's probably one of my earliest issues. In addition, I do have this set here. And I have um, two cents, two, through to three cents, I think. I don't have a, a large um, collection of Mauritius. And as you can see, it's showing its connections to the British Commonwealth through the image of Queen Elizabeth II. Now, Mauritius continues to make stamps. Probably the last one I had here... Uh, uh, it commemorates the royal visit in 1973, March of 1972, rather, uh, which was uh, after it became um, independent. So this verifies that this country indeed is still a crown colony, or a British commonwealth, not a crown colony. It's stamps that are uh, independent of um, British uh, issues are show, look like this, and they have an RS, uh, for their denomination, as opposed to a sense, uh, as they show on these. So that's rather interesting. Uh, the next country I want to look into, and I'm going to do this fairly quickly because there are a lot, are the Maldive Islands. And I know you see Leeward down here. Uh, just ignore that for the present time. We're going to look at the Maldive Islands, and they were a British protectorate. Their first stamps were uh, made from Ceylon stamps. They were overprinted in 1906, and then they were followed by a two cents orange brown uh, made in 1909, and I have one of those. I actually have a small set. So this is their first stamp that actually shows the word, uh, the, their country name, Maldive Islands, and in, in this case, it's both in English and I believe in the language of the country. And again, this is a, um, uh, Commonwealth country, and they do show um, anglicized uh, things on them, uh, uh, images. Uh, this shows a Donald Duck, and there's a, this is a set. Again, my Maldives is like 10 or 12 stamps, and that's it. It's not a very big collection. The next uh, country I want to look at is Montserrat, and it's in the West Indies. It's a British crown colony, and its first stamp was a stamp of Antigua that was overprinted uh, and it was a left-facing uh, Victoria in 1876. And again, I do not have any of those. Probably my earliest Montserrat is this one. And uh, that's dated 1901, I believe. And then I do have overprints uh, showing the British connections during the First World War, the war stamp. And this is again Montserrat. Again, my collection of Montserrat is quite small. I have not been collecting the Commonwealth Islands for too long, maybe a year and a half. And that nine box lot certainly did uh, in, enlarge my collection. Some of the stamps I'm showing you right now were from that. For example, this here. So um, it has helped uh, make my um, collection a lot more in depth, even though it is still sketchy as far as numerical numbers of stamps. The next country I wanna look at is Nauru or Nauru, yeah, Nauru. It's an island in the Pacific, and it was a German possession uh, captured by Australia forces in 1914. And following World War I, it was mandated to British Empire. Its first stamp uh, is a, a British stamp, a half pence green king overprinted. I do not have any of those. However, I do have uh, these modern issues. And I, I quite like this island country because it does a lot with uh, stamps that I collect, for example, uh, topicals, and this is a Christmas topical. And this is also a Christmas topical. And what's really nice about this set is there are say tenant, that means two stamps that are together, but they're different in some way. And these ones, again, 
are uh, their denominations and opposite sides, and then they have a different verse from the uh, biblical verse, one in, in English and another in Polynesian, and these are the 1980 sets. After that country, I want to look at Nayu. It's an island in the South Pacific, northeast of New Zealand, and it uh, is self-governed in association with New Zealand. Its first stamp was actually uh, overprinted one pence uh, in 1902, and I don't know if this is the one pence. I, it's a 1D, so I think it is, but I believe that's what they mean when they're talking about that. I have two overprints from New Zealand showing Nayu on them. And these are mint, and I believe they're hinged, yes. And then I have some earlier issues uh, from Nayu where the country is shown on its own, and this actually shows the island of Nayu. Again, my Nayu collection is very, very rudimentary. This is an interesting stamp because if you look into New Zealand, they have the exact same pictorial depiction of Christmas, with the exception that this top part here says New Zealand on it. So that does show the close connection of those two countries. The next one I want to talk about is Norfolk Island. It's an island in the South Pacific, 900 miles east of Australia, and it is actually a territory of Australia. Its first stamp was issued in 1947. It was a half pea deep orange view of Bath Bay, and this is the actual stamp itself. And again, this one has been hinged, and you can see the hinges have left a mark on the back. Early collectors uh, did, have, did not have these stock books with the little pockets in them, so they were forced to hinge uh, early issues. And so you will, if you are collecting early issues from countries uh, they, that are older, you know, pre-1920s or so, you will find that um, a lot of them are hinged, even going into later times into the 40s. Now, what's nice about Norfolk Island is that, again, I have a very small collection. However, you do get Christmas topicals, um, flora and fauna topicals, and, of course, just flora. So, again, um, I could, because this is a fairly small collection, break this up into topicals. But I've since I've gotten that nine-box lot, I have... Um, divided my uh, collection into countries because I've gotten a whole lot more. And you're going to start seeing evidence of that in this stock book. It uh, was fairly sparse uh, until about a month and a half ago. And now all of a sudden I'm filling up lots of spots. The next country I want to look at is Papua New Guinea. It's the eastern half of the island of New Guinea, north of Australia. It's an independent, independent state in the British Commonwealth. And their first stamp was issued in 1901. I do not have that. My collection starts in the 30s. Uh, my earliest stamp, to the best of my knowledge, is this series here. And I have a two, five, the three cent, and a couple of more cents of those for Papua New Guinea. But what's interesting about this country, and I really like, is it shows a lot of its indigenous peoples on their stamps. And I think they pay homage to that really nicely. It's not just uh, uh, the male indigenous person. They also show females and they show a great deal of what goes on, uh, you know, of life in that country. This is, a, I believe, a lady. I'm not sure um, because it's so small. But it also shows the architecture and lifestyle of those people. This is a, a grass-roofed, thatched uh, dwelling. Um, a lot of their stamps also show... Uh, what people do uh, in regards to harvesting and their food. And the methods of transportation around the islands. So it's an interesting to country, a country to collect from because their stamps do show the peoples and their lifestyles. And these are both early and later. Also shows, for example, there's a set of later stamps that again show the uh, housing that they use and their a method of transportation. This is an outrigger canoe, and it's actually showing a shark that the fellow has caught. So it shows you a lot about their way of life. Also shows flora and fauna. So you get uh, some of the exotic butterflies, as well as exotic birds, which is rather nice. Um, Papua New Guinea, being a Commonwealth country, also commemorates uh, Queen Elizabeth events. This is her jubilee in 1977 on their stamps. 
and continue to do so to a degree. Uh, one of my favorite stamps is this one. That's why I put it on the bottom. And it's a uh, series of different images more or less seamed together to create an image of, of this original. And it's a Festival of the Arts in 1980. So I'm presuming that this was an art panel presented during that time. Um, that, this is again one of my favorite countries because of the interesting stamps. The next country I want to discuss is Pictaran Islands. Now, this is an interesting uh, place because they put out some really nice souvenir sheets. This is Celebration of Bounty Day, Mutiny on the Bounty, and uh, it actually shows the ship involved in that and uh, some of the activities that go on during Bounty Day. They have a fellow here showing uh, people how they do, um, looks like sails on the boat here, and then obviously some sort of uh, the mutiny aspects. And I think that's a reenactment situation. But again, uh, Pitcairn Island does have a lot of these lovely souvenir sheets uh, that one can get into collecting that do show uh, ways of life and activity on the islands. This is a 1980 issue, and it actually tells you how mail is received. It says the mails are loaded from the, the supply ship into longboats ready to go ashore. And then they actually talk about how the uh, mail is transported uh, from landing to, to destination. And apparently they have something uh, are conveyed by the flying fox. So it's interesting. Um, you can get a lot of history and information without ever looking it up about the stamp uh, country from the stamps. This is uh, Pictaran Island mail boats. So, so this gives you, without ever looking it up, that they had boats involved in their mail, mail delivery. Again, uh, Pictaran Islands is located in the South Pacific. They are a British colony, and their first stamp was issued in 1940, a half P, uh, and it's one of uh, that I can show you because it's the first one in my stock book. Um, it's orange and green, and it actually shows the king and uh, some fruit on it. So this was the first issue from Pictaran Islands. Um, and that's, uh, again, I really like that country because some of their um, stamps show the flora and fauna, as mentioned. I do have the connection also quite evident to the Commonwealth. And here's one that shows their flowers. And again, you can, can get into doing this as uh, topicals. The next country I want to discuss is Penryn Island. It's uh, first stamps that came out were overprinted from New Zealand. In 1920, uh, uh, a non-overprint uh, stamp was issued. It's happy green, black, and green, and I happen to have a copy of it. So this is the first stamp, and this was issued in 1920, and it depicts some palm trees. And again, this, this island has got some interesting stamps. Again, topicals. This is for somebody who collects uh, Olympics. You could either put it in an Olympic issue. This one does too. Or you could put it in the actual island issue itself. The next uh, uh, country I want to look at is on my other side, so pardon me for showing another country, but it's St. Helena. It's an island in the Atlantic Ocean. It's approximately 12,000 miles west of Angola, which is off of uh, Africa, of course. The first stamp was issued in 1856. It's a blue left-facing Victoria. I do not have an issue to show you what that looks like. However, I do have some earliest which I will share with you. It is a British crown colony. And this shows St. Helena here. And this is my earliest issue. And again, I think this is from the 20s and the 30s. And again, St. Helena does have some beautiful issues. Uh, this is 1967, and it's commemorating arrival of settlers. And so again, if you're into um, ships, for example, or historical facts, this, this set will allow you to, to um, get information on that. This one shows the settlers again. And uh, it says, uh, arrival of the settlers after the Great Fire of London. So this has got an interesting connection to the Great Fire of London. Uh, flora and fauna and architecture are also shown on some of the stamps. And then um, they also show some of the wildlife. And then another thing that's interesting about some of their stamps is just see, see this issue with the fish. Then it also has... A stamp with an overprint 
which says Tristan de Chuna Settlement 1963. So this is commemorating a settlement of um, Tristan de Chuna, de Chuna. I don't quite know how to say that. Um, I have another one that here says First Local Post, 4th January 1965, on the same fish issue. So it's, it's rather interesting, the things that you can get from some of these countries. This is a lovely uh, stamp of Queen Elizabeth. It says, First Local Post, 4th of January, 1965. So it's commemorating that. Okay, the next country I want to talk about is Samoa. And you're going to see some on this page. It's in the South Pacific. It's a chain of atolls and islands. It's an independent state, a former territory of New Zealand, and uh, by such as in the Commonwealth, uh, because, of course, New Zealand is a Commonwealth country. Its first stamp was issued in 1877. It's a Blue Express. Now, they're kind of an unusual stamp. I do not have the Blue Express. However, I have a Red Express. And these were the first, and these were 1877. And they do come in various values. The blue was the very first, and these were came shortly thereafter. The other thing about Samoa is that because it was with New Zealand, you'll see that this is a New Zealand stamp with Western Samoa on it. So they did overprint New Zealand stamps with Samoa. Now, uh, I have some stamps that say Western Samoa, and I have some stamps that say just Samoa. So uh, I'm not sure when Western Samoa became part of Samoa or whether Samoa itself was Western Samoa. I suspect maybe Western and regular Samoa were kind of divided at one point and then came together. This is a uh, Samoa stamp, the earliest one I've got with just the word Samoa on it, and it's 1958. Now again, Samoa is interesting because they have a lot of uh, stamps that can be collected either by country or by topical. Now this floral one here is a block, and again, it's got an inscription on it, and it's flora and fauna. And then you can see here, this is an interesting one, because it's showing the bicentennial of American independence commemoratively. And uh, people will collect one like that and possibly put it in uh, a Statue of Liberty topical or a U.S. independence topical. So they're nice for that purpose. A lot of uh, the uh, British royalty are shown on Samoa issues. Um, here's Queen Elizabeth. That's part of that set. Also, Samoa does put out Christmas and like type of stamps, so Easter and whatnot, so that you can collect topically if you want to get into doing a Christmas topical as well. I have elected because I've gained all of these blocks here, came to me from that nine box estate, and as a consequence, I am now going to keep stamps out of my topicals and keep them in uh, by country. St. Lucia is the one I'm going to talk to you about next. It's an island in the West Indies. It's an independent state uh, in the British Commonwealth. And its first stamp was a one pence rose red, left facing, facing Victoria. Now, I do not have it. My earliest issues for St. Lucia are these ones here. And I find that a very attractive stamp. And also this sort here. So I don't have anything earlier than that. And again, early stamps are quite dear. They can be very expensive. And again, my St. Lucia took up about 20 stamps before I got that nine box lot. And again, I have added, this is a St. Louis Lucia Mint Never Hinged. And I have three copies of uh, different denominations of this, the eight the 10, and the 25. And I did debate whether I should put these in a boat topical or a Queen Elizabeth topical or in St. Lucia. And when I found out how many more stamps I had, I put them in my St. Lucia or Lucia. Uh, Gain St. Lucia or Lucia, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, it can be used as a topical, which I had. This is a bird series, and it goes on for quite a bit. I have three uh, different issues, denominations. And at one time, those were in my bird collection, and I still probably have some of it in my bird collection, but I'm now starting to move them into uh, um, this book on their own. And as you can see up here, there's uh, religious art, so they would be a topical. There's a Boy Scouts issue. I could have put that. That came out of my Boy Scouts topical. And St. Lucia also has 
uh, back of the book, postage due stamps. That's my only example. Okay, next I want to look at St. Vincent. And I have to turn quite a bit to get to it in my book. Uh, because some of the other countries that I'm not doing, I don't have enough stamps or information to really do them justice. So, and I don't really collect those. They're just happenstances in, in boxes that I find. Uh, so St. Vincent, it's an island in the West Indies. It's an independent state of British, the British uh, Commonwealth. Its first stamp was issued in 1861. It's a one pence rose left facing, facing Victoria. And again, I do not have that, but I do have... Um, an earlier issue, this one here. And again, I believe this is from the 20s. And it's St. Vincent. Now, St. Vincent is nice because it has various uh, overprints in some of the stamps. For example, this issue here comes at plain. Or you can get it where it says New Constitution, 1931. And then there are other issues that do that too. For example, this issue here is plain. And then the overprint issue, New Constitution, 1930, I think it's oh, 1951, pardon me, not 1931. I stand corrected. My eyes are getting dim. Um, St. Vincent also puts out a really nice little set that has a face in it. And now you'll notice this isn't a funny little plastic sleeve. The collector that had this obviously took it out of a book, but there are books that these can uh, go into as protective pockets. And a lot from that collection, as you can see, were in plastic sleeves. These are mint, never hinge. And I kept them that way because I do tend to move them around a little bit and uh, this way they can stand, uh, be uh, protected. And this uh, set um, could go in as, uh, it be broken up. This could be in flowers, this could be in boats. But because it is a set, I decided to keep it together. Now this is interesting about St. Vincent. This here, you'll notice, has a blank box with no stamp image on it. And the stamps on either end are called one, uh, $125. This is called a gutter pair. So in other words, they have a gutter between them. And a lot of collectors like to collect these. And sometimes there's uh, information on these. Uh, Obviously, this is part of it, uh, uh, the rest of the block it uh, originally came from. But sometimes they have colored little symbols, and that would be called a stoplight gutter pair. The next one here that I really think is neat is a souvenir sheet of the Olympics. And it's showing uh, Olympic gold medal winners from the Summer Olympics. And it's, it's a beautiful uh, issue from St. Vincent. And again... They do commemorate royal, uh, royal events. This is the 60th birthday of Queen Elizabeth II. And it's a lovely issue showing her consort and the people she was with and, and her. And again, they, uh, it could be put into a Queen Elizabeth uh, topical, and this could be put into a little bit topical. But I elected to, to put them in um, my St. Vincent collection. Now, one thing about St. Vincent is it does pull it out a lot of these lovely souvenir sheets and topical sets. This is the 25th anniversary of the coronation in 1978, and it's a souvenir sheet. And it's a souvenir sheet, not a block, because it's got additional information that denotes what this is commemorating, and it doesn't have the inscription blocks and whatnot, it, though it is a block. This is an actual souvenir sheet. I've had people ask me, you know, how do you tell a souvenir sheet from an inscription block? And that's how an inscription block is like this, uh, or a souvenir sheet is like this, and it does talk about it. It's a commemorative of something that would be worthy of having a souvenir for. And then, uh, another uh, issue that they're famous for are their train issues, and they put out quite a lot of these if memory serves me right. And often they come as satanants or two put together. And uh, they're rather nice. And they put out more than one. This, this can be, there's racing cars they do with this. And I think there's uh, trains and planes and all sorts. They also do Christmas Satanots. And so uh, a lot of these stamps are sold specifically to the public, collecting public, for collectibles in their uh, stamp collections. And consequently, they like to get, the, this is a gutter pair, gutter between the two. And they're totally um, united. 
Um, the other thing is, is that important events um, St. Vincent is good at commemorating. This is the Halley's Comet. And as I mentioned, they are affiliated with the uh, royal family. So this is the Duke and Duchess of York, their wedding in 1986, I think it was. Yes, 1986. And again, this is the Satanant, two different stamps or different images uh, put together. Okay, so that's St. Vincent. And again, as I said, they go on for quite a way. Uh, this is an interesting St. Vincent stamp. It's a specimen. So these were sold uh, to give uh, collectors or, or uh, hobbyists or post office an idea of what the stamp would look like once it was fully issued. Uh, another gutter pair. This is Girl Guides. And again, there is a gutter between the two stamps. And they are called gutter pairs because there's two of them. All right, so that's St. Vincent. Uh, the last one I want to talk about is St. Kitts. Uh, some other stamps will say St. Christopher, some will say St. Kitts, and some will say St. Kitts and Nevis Angula because there were different times in the history of this country where it was associated with other regions. Uh, for all intents and purposes, for my presentation, I'm going to call it St. Kitts. It's in the West Indies, and it's a state in the British Commonwealth. And in 1980, the, fish you, uh, the first issue of St. Kitts was put out. Prior to that, it was called St. Christopher and Nevis. And you can see that there is definitely a Commonwealth co um, correlation here, St. Christopher, Nevis, Anguilla. So there were several countries that went into that. And then eventually, St. Kitts came out, and the St. Kitts stamps just have St. Kitts on them. And this is an official stamp, and it, that means it was mailed from an official uh, entity, government, and or postal, perhaps, or on official business. And this is a St. Kitts specimen. Well, that's it for today. So until next time, keep on looking into and for stamps. Stamp Sleuth, signing off.